Hi, I'm Patrick, and if you're watching this, then you already know that I'm making a documentary about this kid from the YouTube video that I posted called The Saddest Boy Ever, which was a clip from the daytime talk show, The Jenny Jones Show. Firstly, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Um, if you're out there just doing your best to be the best dad that you can be every day to your kids, I salute you. If you're a man who is now a father and you never had a father or your father wasn't in your life for whatever reason, you know, my heart goes out to you. It's not easy trying to figure out how to be a dad if you never had one. And I know probably a lot of you out there may be finding yourself in that situation. So um, I just want to recognize you. I made the update video back in December of 2018. That's three and a half years ago. That's a long time. I haven't posted anything since. And I want to firstly apologize for that, you know, to all the people who have been checking to see um, I didn't mean to just leave you out in the cold. To all the people who have been offering words of encouragement and support, I also want to extend a big thank you. It's, it's really appreciated because this process has been very difficult for me um, for a number of reasons. It's been challenging, but rewarding, and I don't regret anything. To get to the documentary, the main question is, am I still making it? Have I been making it? what's happening? The answer is yes, I have been making it and it's taken a long time. It's taken a long time for a number of reasons, but mostly because it's telling the story over the course of a few years. And unfortunately, I can't divulge too many details about the story because I don't want you to know too much about it before you see this. And there's a reason for that that can really only be understood once you watch it. So you're just going to have to trust me. And if you don't, um, that's okay too. This journey of making this documentary has been an emotional roller coaster for me that has changed me permanently for the better. So it's a good thing, but I've really realized that there's a lot of people out there who are suffering and need somebody to talk to about the darkest, most painful parts of their history that they've never really explored and healed. And um, we all need somebody to talk to, somebody that we can talk to about these things. And that's important and that's okay. We all need help sometimes. Uh, that's been one of the main takeaways from this whole thing. I'm gonna say this because my, this is what my dad recommended that I say in this video. I'm gonna ask you, have you ever had a dream something that you really wanted to do, but you weren't sure if you could or should do it. Maybe that's moving to another country or a city across the country. Maybe it's starting your own business and quitting your job to pursue your passion. It could be starting a family. Well, this is my dream. I'm living my dream right now, and it's really hard. <laughs> um, there's a lot of questions that you have to answer. There's a lot of things that you have to do for the first time. And it can't be rushed. You know, you can't just magically make everything happen. You, there are mistakes along the way, there's bumps along the road, but it's worth it. And for me, it's, it's taken me a long time. And that's not only because this is the first time I'm ever attempting to make a documentary, but it's also because that's what the story has dictated. When I first met this kid, who's now a, now a grown man, um, I realized that there was a bigger story that tied into the original video 
that could only be told over time. And I've had to accept that. I mean, I wanted to be done with this sooner than it's taken me. I had to move across the country to a place where I don't know anybody, I don't have any friends or family, and I'd only been there one time before. Um, this is where this guy lives now, today. And I realized that if I wanted to be able to capture the story as it happened, I had to relocate. And it's been kind of crazy, I'm not gonna lie, but that story has unfolded and it's taken this long. And it's not something that I had any control over and um, I had to accept that. So that's why sometimes it takes a long time to realize your dream and you can't rush it and that's okay. And that's something I've had to accept and become okay with. So to anyone out there pursuing a dream, I support you and it's worth it. So keep going. I'm really excited and happy to say that I'm getting pretty close to being done with filming. And that is kind of a crazy thing for me because there was a time where I didn't even own a camera and this was all just a dream. So I would say, you know, I'm two thirds of the way done, but I still have to edit it. And I've been filming off and on for three years. So I have over a hundred hours of footage and I'm really excited to announce that I do have help. I have enlisted the assistance of a filmmaker named Parker Smith, and he and I are going to edit the documentary together but we have over a hundred hours of footage and that's a lot, that's a lot of footage <laughs> to go through. But I have a lot of faith that we're gonna be able to do it. And uh, I've been bringing on people who are much more creative, smarter and um, t more talented than I am. And that's a good thing because I'm pretty limited. For the people out there who are wondering when it'll be done, I don't have a good answer for you. I'm working as fast as I can, but it costs money to do this stuff. And I'm the one paying for everything. I can't tell you how long it's gonna take. I have an idea of how long I would like it to take, but editing is a long process in and of itself, and I still have to pay my bills. So, I am working on trying to figure out how to finance the post-production portion of this documentary, but right now I don't have any funding beyond the money that I put in myself, and I'm working on figuring that out. So hopefully sooner rather than later, but I don't have an answer and I don't want to over-promise and under-deliver. So I appreciate your patience. I can assure you that it's going to be worth the wait. I know it. So thank you. Thank you for being patient. And um, it's coming. If anyone out there is uh, rich and, and cash out of crypto early and is sitting on a bunch of cash and, and wants to be the executive producer on a documentary, feel free to email me. <laughs> um, <laughs> My uh, email is in the description. Um, seeing as it is Father's Day, I would like to take this opportunity to wish my dad, Mark, a uh, happy Father's Day. Um, <sighs> wish I wasn't so emo. I got to use these lens tissues as regular tissues are more expensive. So I'm already wasting money. Um, my dad is a man who I really respect and admire and um, raised five kids, worked his ass off. He was a roofer. He's an ex-army ranger. He's 
hands down the toughest guy that I know. And he's also, you know, a sensitive guy. And um, okay, I'm back. Uh, got a little emotional there. Um, but I'm going to share a story about my dad that I think really sums up who he is. And it's, it's a really vivid memory for me. When I was about five or six years old, you know, one of the first houses I ever lived in, my dad had planted um, a couple trees. And as kids, uh, we would play baseball in the front yard. And would, we would use these trees as bases. So we would hit the, hit the ball. We were playing with a wiffle ball and a bat. And um, my dad pitched it to me and I hit it. And I started running. I rounded first base. I hit the first tree. And I got to this second base, the second tree. And I grabbed it and it shook. And when that happened, a couple seconds later, my dad turned and looked at me and had this look of horror in his eyes. And he came sprinting at me full speed and snatched me up and wrapped me in his arms and just covered me and ran full speed back to the front door. And um, we got inside and I didn't, I was really confused. I didn't know what was happening. And then later found out that when I had hit that tree, a hornet's nest had fallen to the ground and they started swarming and I didn't see it. And my dad wasn't wearing a shirt. And I have this distinct memory of going into his bedroom and the curtains are drawn and he it's kind of dark in the room and he's just laying there face down with his back up um, covered in hornet stings and uh i don't know if i ever really thanked him for that but <laughs> dad i know you're watching this and i want to say thank you for saving me from the hornets as a young kid. Uh, I love you and I'm very grateful for our relationship today. Happy Father's Day. Thanks everyone for watching.